Hi tech fans, for years now we waited for a new Apple display and finally it's here and it's much more expensive than we thought and should you even get it? The first thing you notice when you see the studio display is how premium it looks. It is made entirely out of 100% recycled aluminium. The design is flawless and clean. Not even the Pro Display XDR can keep quite up with it. The smooth back is only interrupted by a Thunderbolt 3 and 3 USB-C ports. And there is not even an on-off switch. When you connect a Mac, the studio display turns on by itself and charges a MacBook with up to fast 96 watts. Everything is controlled by the software, so a Windows user can't do much. Visually and in terms of build quality, the studio display has no competition. Normal monitors are made out of 99.9% .9 plastic with a shaky stand and usually some strange logo up front. But the studio display is not perfect either. The display edges may be thinner than on an iMac, but thicker than the Pro Display XDR and other current monitors. I mean, how much better would a studio display with small bezels like the new MacBook Pro look? I would even accept a notch. The studio display does have a webcam and a great one too with 12 megapixel and full HD resolution. It does have the center stage technology so it follows you around when you move in video calls and it even zooms out when multiple people enter the frame. It is a great quality webcam and the microphone quality is also really good with three microphones in total. And the six built-in speakers, guys, it doesn't even make sense how good they sound. Loud. With so much bass and yet so clear, it's like witchcraft. External speakers like I have them here are a little bit better, but they are much bigger and cost 300 bucks. I couldn't notice much of 3D audio. The A13 processor doesn't change that either. The studio display can be purchased with two different types of glass. Normal and one with a nano texture, that means matte. These options are also available on the Pro Display and I have them both here. The nano texture is not a simple skin on the glass, it's a chemical process that ensures that light breaks very fine without having a significant influence on the colors, contrast and brightness. However, there is a slight noise, like millions of small prisms. You can't see it on dark content, on light one you can. The regular glass is more accurate and perfect in my opinion, but if you are in a backlight situation, you really have to get the matte option. I personally find it so much better. I paid 1000 euros on my Pro Display XDR to get it and now the option is 250 euros. There are three options for the stand. First, a normal one like on the iMac, which can be tilted. Second, a VESA mount, compatible with VESA systems. Third, a tilt and height adjustable stand, visually and functionally very similar to the one of the Pro Display XDR. Definitely my favorite option because I like high displays, it's more ergonomic. The height can be adjusted stepless, but it feels very solid and doesn't move by itself. The studio display is not rotatable like the Pro Display. This is only possible with the VESA mount. The height adjustable option is the only one that costs extra, $400, certainly not for everyone, but at least Apple does offer this option at half the price than it was on the Pro Display XDR. Depending on the variant, the weight varies between 5.5 and 7.7 kg. By the way, my YouTube channel is brand new, I just started it and a sub would mean a lot to me. Time to talk about the image quality. It's a 27 inch LC display with LED backlight. The resolution is 5K, which corresponds to 14.7 million pixels, much more than the 8.3 million pixels of 4K. And of course, the picture is incredibly sharp, crisp and lively. Fonts look like they are printed. Pictures have incredible detail. Hardly any other monitor has such a high resolution. The studio display is calibrated in the P3 color space. The colors look very realistic. This allows me to edit and color correct videos professionally. The only thing that bothers is the contrast. It's only 1000 to 1, which means that blacks are not really black, they glow lightly. This is the biggest difference to the Pro Display XDR and other monitors with local dimming or OLED. The new MacBook Pros even have mini LED. I really hoped to see that in the studio display and promotion as well. 
Some people are wondering whether Apple is using the same display as in the iMac and the LG Ultrafine, but that's not the case because it's getting a little bit brighter, 600 nits to be exact. That is not enough for HDR, but it's a lot brighter than a lot of the other monitors out there. However, the viewing angle stability of the studio display is better than that of the Pro Display XDR, which drifts towards bluish tone. Here the colors remain stable. I was surprised to see how much is installed permanently in the studio display. On the one hand, the stand, which means the option you choose at the beginning remains forever, not like the Pro Display where you can change it afterwards. And the power cable is also not changeable. I fought for a while and I couldn't think of any meaningful reason why you would install a power cable firmly. But downsides, there are a lot of them. You can't replace the cable in itself. I mean, it is really unlikely to destroy a cable on a monitor, but if you do so, you have to return it to Apple. And the other thing is, cable management is really hard, so I don't get why Apple is doing that. However, I understand even less why the Thunderbolt 4 cable, which comes in the box, is so short, barely a meter long. This is so little that it is not enough on my desk to connect the Mac Studio to the display. I really have to put it right next to it, which explains why all the product images look exactly like this. There's no other way. It's easier with a MacBook, but not with a Mac Pro, and certainly not when it's on the floor. Why do you skimp on a cable in such a high quality product? I was forced to use my Pro Display cable, which is a decent 2 meters long. Which brings me to the price. Some people say it's just too expensive. Others are like really happy that there is an Apple display, which is not like 6 grand and upwards, and which functions good and looks great. But 1749 euros is a lot of money and my option is even 500 euros more expensive than that. So it is more expensive than an iMac with a 5K panel, keyboard, mouse, webcam and speakers and a whole computer. So the studio display definitely is too expensive. But how much? I wouldn't say 1000 euros but like 300 maybe. Apple really knows that they don't have any competition in terms of looks and display quality, so they're really trying to get your money. I think they should have included ProMotion, Mini LED or maybe HDR. Just something to make the price more reasonable. That was it for my video. I hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Bye.